Hello, and welcome to Health Watch. I'm your host, Carolyn Wilson from Ledge Light Health District. The goal of this program is to bring you information on a wide range of health topics and to introduce you to the great people doing important work across the community. Today, I'm joined by outgoing Director of Health, Stephen Mansfield. I have the bittersweet task of conducting what I think is his final interview as director as he prepares for retirement. Steve, welcome to the show. Thanks, Carolyn. Thanks for having me. So Steve, as director, I know you get a lot of requests for interviews, <laughs> and I'm happy you were able to fit one more in. Uh, over the years, I've had the pleasure of getting to know you a bit, and I'm looking forward to sharing a little bit of what I know and maybe even learning more with our viewers. So first things first, um, tell us a little bit about how you came to Ledgelight and how your role has changed over the years. Sure, um, that's an easy question. Um, and just so everyone's aware, I've, I've been with Ledgelight for just uh, just short of 25 years. Um, and my career in public health wasn't really by design. I began my studies uh, at Southern Connecticut State University in biology and happened to take an epidemiology course as an elective um, just to fill up my schedule. Um, I found I really enjoyed epidemiology and I started looking uh, more closely at uh, public health as a major. Um, so early in, I believe it was my sophomore year, I decided to switch uh, my major from biology to public health. Um, and I went through the program. Uh, I enjoyed it and I, I did well. And um, uh, I, I think it's safe to say I wasn't ready for a career in public health when I graduated from Southern Connecticut. Um, I think I was just one of those people who really wasn't uh, uh, ready for the real world, so to speak, or at least I didn't think I was. Um, so I, I spent a few years doing what I loved, working in the marine trades, building boats, sailing, and so forth. Um, and I was actually lucky enough to meet a gentleman by the name of Sam Crowley, who is a former director of health for Ledge Light Health District. Um, Sam also uh, was an avid sailor, and I happened to um, be involved in the restoration of one of his wooden boats. And, and we got to talking, and and one thing led to another, and um, I became aware of an entry-level environmental position at Ledge Light Health District. Um, and not long after, I found myself working in the in the public health um, world. So um, it was just very fortuitous that I that I ran into Sam, um, and he made me aware of some of the local opportunities in public health. Um, so I moved away from my maritime career and then uh, began working. Um, as an entry-level environmental health person, and then things kind of progress from there. That's great. Now, um, how has your role changed since you first came to Ledgelight? You mentioned entry-level, and now you're director of health. What, what did that transition look like? Um, again, uh, I didn't have a whole um, lot of ideas about where my career was going when I first started. I, I I became um, the lead in the food service program. So I was in charge of all, I believe it was 210 food service establishments in our two municipalities. Um, and I worked my, my way up, got uh, my environmental certifications and, and was uh, a full-time sanitarian uh, and eventually was promoted to sanitarian two. Um, and a couple of years later, I became head of that environmental health department. Um, and then after the events of 9-11, things changed pretty dramatically. Um, I was uh, also put in charge of our public health preparedness program, which was completely new to me. I kind of hit the ground running and, and learned as I went. Um, so I my career shifted, although I still had some environmental health responsibilities, I was um, very involved in all of the emergency preparedness efforts uh, at Ledge Light Health District, and as were all of the health districts and departments across the state of Connecticut. It was really a, a whole nother branch of public health um, that wasn't traditional. Um, of course, we're involved in some emergency management meetings, millstone exercises, and so forth, but um, we really uh, took center stage in a lot of the responses. So that was a big change in my career. Um, I worked in preparedness for quite a while until I was promoted to deputy director 
um, under a former director of health, Baker Salisbury. I worked uh, under Baker for about seven years before I was promoted to the director of health position. So I've worked in a lot of different disciplines within Ledgelight Health District. And um, I think that was very beneficial for my career because not only um, in my current position, I have a lot of administrative roles, um, but I know what it's like um, to work with people in the regulatory uh, industry, um, regulated establishments, food service, and so forth, um, and also uh, all of the connections and relationships we've built in public health preparedness and administration and finance and so forth. So uh, I definitely worked in a lot of different divisions in public health, and I've been lucky enough to do that all under one roof uh, at Ledgelight Health District. Yeah, what a career, a little bit of everything and a really great uh, journey for sure. Now, having said all of that, all of the, the roles that you have played, what do you think would surprise people to know about the day-to-day -day happenings at a local health department? Um, I think the fact that it's never mundane, it's never the same thing uh, from day to day. I, I think today is a really good example. I had certain things on my agenda, some things I had to wrap up, um, and uh, I was notified early uh, before the workday began about uh, an E. coli in a public water system in one of our municipalities, which required us to go into the field and actually issue public health orders. Um, food service establishment needed to be closed. Um, a lot of regulatory things had to happen in short order. And, and we're good at that. We've been doing it for a long time. We know what we have to do and how to do it. Um, but I certainly wasn't uh, expecting to be doing that work this morning. Um, every day is different. Um, I think COVID is an extreme example of how things can change uh, really overnight and change uh, how our organization operates on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, so it isn't mundane. It isn't um, a, a public service job where um, uh, the routine is followed. Um, there are curveballs uh, every day, and I think everyone who works in public health uh, is aware of that. And uh, and you get used to it. And it's one of the things I think that that keeps the job so fresh. Um, it's not mundane. It, it doesn't seem like uh, a grind. Um, there are always different things that come up that we have to respond to, and that keeps it fresh. Absolutely. So again, like, you know, you mentioned everything, every day is a little bit different. You have to be nimble and ready to respond to things. Looking at the public health field since you've, you've been involved, what would you say some of the major changes have been that you've observed? Um, I think uh, growth is the biggest thing. Um, you know, Ledge Light Health District is a good example of how public health has changed. When I joined Ledge Light uh, in 1998, I was one of seven uh, individuals working for a two-town uh, health district. Um, now we cover 10 municipalities. We have more than 40 employees. Um, our budget has um, has doubled in the, in the short time that I've been director over the past eight years. Um, and uh, we've added numerous municipal municipalities. So I think um, uh, the biggest change in in my career in the Ledge Light Health District is the growth. Um, you know, I've been incredibly lucky to be surrounded by a great group of people throughout my public health career. Um, our staff, our board of directors, all of our municipal colleagues have been so supportive of the district um, and my leadership. Um, and when I took on the responsibility of leading Ledge Light, um, I was committed to public health regionalization and developing our programs to meet the needs of our communities, um, and obviously putting the district in a solid place financially. So, uh, yeah, I really think in a word, um, our greatest accomplishment and, and the most change we've seen in public health has been growth. Um, we've just become so much more um, than we were um, what seems like a short time ago when I began my career in public health. Absolutely. And I've gotten to witness some of that change myself, you know, being here at the district for going on 13 years, I will say, you know, absolutely growth and then sort of the shift to health districts and, and some of the consolidation that's happened across the state. It's been interesting to watch, especially in our building. 
Um, so reflecting on your time as director, what would you say some of the biggest challenges you faced have been? Uh, well, the first one's, I think, pretty easy. Um, the biggest challenge was the COVID response, um, and, uh, and not just for me, but for our entire staff and, and public health in general. You know, we haven't seen um, a pandemic like that in so long. Um, we've only had one other, I'd say, major public health response, and that was uh, during H1N1, but that was that was so different than um, than what we experienced uh, with COVID, and, and of course we were prepared. We had our plans and procedures on the shelf, and and we regularly exercised our responses. But um, exercising and doing the real thing are much different. Um, I think all of our staff would agree that um, what we did during COVID was something that we never expected. Um, you know, personally, as director of health, um, I think it was good for public health. I try to look at the, the bright side of things. Um, we, we created and fostered existing relationships with our municipal partners, our preparedness partners, um, the Department of Public Health, the governor's office. It just strengthened um, public health in general. Um, but it was very, very difficult. I mean, we were all on call 24-7 for literally years. Um, and uh, things changed so, so quickly with the sector guidance rules that came out um, of the Department of uh, Economic and Community Development. Um, so we were always rolling with the punches. Um, we not only had to do things effectively and efficiently from uh, an educational standpoint and um, providing vaccinations uh, to individuals and, and making sure that, um, that we were addressing the needs of all of our population. Uh, but we still had to do our day-to-day -day jobs. We still have or had and have um, our statutory responsibilities to inspect food service establishments, to make sure our land use responsibilities are met. So um, we're lucky that uh, although the money uh, that supported um, our COVID activities came a little bit late, it was substantial um, and that allowed us to hire the necessary staff and do the work that we needed to do. But that was by far the most challenging part um, of my public health career. And, um, and I'll answer the question before it's asked. No, it didn't cause me to retire. Um, this was the plan, although I did um, speed it up just a little bit. Um, that challenge was what we've been preparing for for a long time. Um, aside from that, uh, the COVID response, I would say, um, you know, the, the positive of growth is, is a great thing, but there also are negative things associated with growth. Um, when you grow as a district like ours, you know, going from seven to 40 employees, um, there is a lot to deal with um, in terms of um, our human resources and hiring and, and working with 10 municipalities as opposed to just two. Um, you know, that's, uh, that's 10 CEOs, 10 building departments, um, and there are different people and personalities and leadership. So um, that was uh, a challenge and I think will always be a challenge. Um, I've been lucky enough to be here for 25 years, but our leadership in, in our respective municipalities does tend to change. Um, so that's always something that's uh, very, very challenging. All right, well, as you said earlier, never a dull moment in our field. For okay, sure. we're gonna take a quick break, uh, but we will be right back with more with Steve Mansfield after we return. Mom was always organized, but she started forgetting to pay her bills on time. And she'd buy the same gifts over and over. Telling the girls about my Alzheimer's diagnosis was really hard. At first we had our cries, but then we were like, okay, let's make a plan. Early detection gave us time to adapt together. It's so important for you to think about what you can do and making the most of what you have. If you or your family are noticing changes, it could be Alzheimer's. Talk about seeing a doctor together. COVID has been a really long fight. As a father, I want to give the best tools to protect my kids. 
So what can we do to get back to that sense of normalcy? Many parents are asking if it is worth it to get their kids vaccinated against COVID. And the answer is yes. It's an added layer of protection. It's safe and effective for children. It's definitely safer than getting the virus. So if you have questions or concerns about the vaccine, we're here to help. Welcome back to Health Watch. I am here today with outgoing Director of Health, Steve Mansfield. And today we're talking about his career journey. And we were just talking before the break about the challenges uh, you faced as Director of Health. Now I wanna pivot to highlights of your career. Tell me about some of those great moments, the things that you'll always remember. Um, I think, one of the things that comes to mind is uh, I mentioned before the support. Um, whenever I think back on my career at Ledgelight, I, I, it sounds so cliche, but I think about all the people that I've worked with and the people who have supported me um, as I've um, moved through my career. Um, when I started as an entry level environmental person, um, I, I really didn't have a lot of um, career ambition. Um, not that that's a bad thing. I just wasn't sure where I was going um, with my career in public health. And as I said, Sam Crowley was very supportive, not only supportive, but he was um, pushy, for lack of a better word, in uh, encouraging me to go back to school and get my master's degree in public health, um, which I did with the support of the board, both financial and otherwise. Um, so that was really great. Um, Sam was, is just a good example of that. And then uh, my board of directors, you know, through the years, um, recognizing that people had a lot of faith in me and and would see fit to put me in charge of, of such a great organization. I think that's probably the biggest highlight of my career. And the fact that um, we have such a, a strong staff and and I would say, you know, even with our growth, we've had um, so many individuals have been with our organization for decades. Um, and that says a lot about um, our organization, you know, the lack of turnover. Um, we are a place that people like to work and they like to continue to work. And um, I take a little bit of credit for that. I think uh, it is a wonderful place to work and um, probably one of the most satisfying things uh, about my career in public health as being part of an organization that that treats people like people and and putting our families um, as a as a big priority and um, not being um, uh, how do I put this um, or not, I think the fact that we are so family oriented and um, and willing to work with our employees um, to make. Uh, obviously meet the requirements um, of a public health department, but understand that it's comprised of individuals who all have different lives and they come from different backgrounds. Um, so um, yeah, having having um, Legislative Health District in that place is a, as a wonderful place to work and being part of that has been one of the most satisfying parts of my career. That's wonderful. That's, that's a really nice reflection. So you mentioned that you came onto the scene not really knowing you were going to be in public health and it kind of came to you what about the the young people who might be interested in public health do you do you have any advice for people just starting out in public health um well i, I think even those people who um may not be considering a, a career in public health i think i would encourage them to consider it um i kind of fell into the public health um, you know academically into the the public health realm um, because I happened upon a course that uh, was related to public health, but it is a very rewarding career. Um, I think a good example of that is the a number of clinical people that we currently have working for Ledgelight um, who previously worked in, uh, in the clinical industry um, who much prefer working in this kind of environment. Um, there are so many opportunities in public health. Uh, the pay is good. Um, it's progressive, um, and there are always opportunities. And there are uh, there is a, a huge need for public health professionals in Connecticut and across the United States. Um, we're currently 
hiring uh, environmental health positions. Um, there uh, is a lot of job security in, in public health. Um, so if you're uh, thinking about a career in public health, if you're thinking about what am I going to do when I go to college, um, I think that's something that, that folks should consider. For those that are graduating um, with a career in public health, I, I think one of the best things you can do is, as, is look at, um, if you're interested in local public health, look at the public health departments um, that you're considering and look at them closely because um, there's a saying in public health, if you've been to one public health department, you've only been to one public health department. They're not all the same. Um, although we have a lot of the same responsibilities, some are uh, very large and um, uh, I'll say bureaucratic, uh, municipally oriented. There are others that are small um, and uh, what fits you won't necessarily fit everyone else. So consider the type of organization you'd want to work with and then um, what you would want to do. And uh, hopefully there is a department or a district out there that has that need. So um, matching your uh, career aspirations up with those of a public health district or department, I think is probably the most sound advice I could give. Um, really decide what do you love to do? And if it's public health, what part of public health is most attractive to you and, and head in that direction. That's great advice. Don't be afraid to knock on the door and keep an open mind. I think that's, that's pretty good advice. Now for the sure. fun stuff, what are your plans following retirement? Um, I think the first thing I'm, I'm going to really focus on is learning to relax. Um, the way I put it when, when my friends and I talk about that, you know, what are you going to do? What's going to be the biggest change? I think I'm already experiencing it now is this, this huge weight that's been on my shoulders, um, especially since um, being director of health is, is slowly going away and that's going to disappear. So I'm going to go from um, being someone who has a lot of responsibilities and decision-making power and um, a lot of say in what goes on on a day-to-day -day basis, that's going to disappear really overnight. Um, so I'm going to need to focus my energies on other things and uh, learning to take things uh, a little bit slower. Um, and I've been working on that for a while. Um, but having structure and focus as I move forward in my post public health life is, I know is really important to me. And we have a lot of adventures already planned. Um, both my wife Zeke and I have done a lot of cool stuff over the years and we plan on continuing that. Um, my first adventure starts literally right after I leave work uh, tomorrow afternoon, um, doing a 600 mile plus bike touring trip starting in Nova Scotia and ending up in New York. Um, I'll be doing that solo, but I think that will be a good way to clear my head a little bit um, moving forward. And then we have some uh, traveling plans. Uh, we're heading to Vietnam in November and um, probably taking our uh, our van and our dog down to Mexico early next year. So I've got the next year or so booked up pretty good, but we'll see what else comes our way. Sounds like a lot of fun. And I know you'll come up with some great ideas um, so lastly, what do you think you'll miss most about being at Ledge Light? Um, yeah, I think about that a lot. And as I said, you know, just the change in responsibilities is going to be huge. But I think the thing that hits me the most is, is um, our team. I'll miss our team the most. You know, all the folks who I've worked with, with for so many years, we spend so much of our waking hours with the people we work with and you know we've developed personal and professional relationships and and some of those i know will remain um, after i leave ledge light some won't um but you know we've grown to more than as i said 40 employees we're still a very family-like organization and i honestly can't wrap my head around what it's going to be like not being part of this team anymore or what that will feel like um, next week, um, when I read something about public health or something in one of our municipalities that involves us, the fact that I don't have to worry about it, I don't have to think about it, I don't have to think about all those considerations, um, that's going to be the biggest change. But, but definitely, uh, I will miss the people I work with every day the most. 
That's a great answer. And we will surely miss you. That's all the time we have today here on Health Watch. Steve, thank you so much for your 25 years of public health service and your extraordinary leadership um, during some very, very challenging times as you've reflected on. Uh, we look forward to connecting with the incoming Director of Health, hopefully in the near future, Jennifer Maggio. And um, to our audience, thank you for tuning in. And we hope we'll see you next time right here back on Health Watch. Thanks, Carolyn. Thanks, everyone.